So if you want to maintain the habitable environments for us as well as for the future generations to come, we have to really reduce the amount of CO2 in the air in the near future. And our technology uh, could address some of those uh, major issues that we're facing today uh, by introducing some of the genetic mutations in plants that we discovered recently. Hi, I'm Beth Fisher, Director of Intellectual Property for WARF. And I'm Emily Bauer, Director of Licensing. We have the privilege of nominating Hiroshi Maeda, Ryo Yokoyama, and Marco Solivera for the 2022 WARF Innovation Awards for an innovation that supercharges photosynthesis. Their discovery could lead to plants that absorb more carbon from the atmosphere and might also lead to a greener way of making chemicals in everything from pharmaceuticals to disinfectants. It's been a pleasure working with their team. Congratulations, and we can't wait to see what you do next. Uh, so my name is Hiroshi Maeda, uh, professor at the Department of Botany uh, at UW-Madison. Yeah, my name is Marcos Oliveira. I'm a scientist at the Botany Department uh, at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Over the century, um, human society um, have used the fossil fuel uh, to provide the cheap fuels as well as the uh, many chemical compounds, uh, particularly the aromatic uh, compounds. Uh, which are used everywhere in our society, from food additives to the fuels to plastics to medicines. Uh, but unfortunately, these compounds are currently uh, mainly derived from fossil fuels. Uh, and at the same time, by using these fossil fuels, uh, we, we increase the production of CO2 in the air, leading to the, the global warming. So. Um, our technology could potentially address both of these issues by increasing the capturing of CO2 from the air and also increasing the production of aromatic compounds uh, in a re using a renewable resources. Recently, through genetic screening, we had identified novel mutations, the genetic mutations, that can accelerate this biochemical process of converting CO2 uh, from the air into the aromatic natural products in plants. So by introducing these uh, mutations in plants, we found that the plants can produce a really high level of aromatic amino acid, which is the starting materials to produce many aromatic compounds. Uh, but also, um, at the same time, uh, surprisingly, we found that these plants have high uh, level of CO2 fixation. Uh, and we think that is because that um, in order to produce many of these aromatic compounds, uh, plants need additional carbon source and energy source uh, to meet that increased demands. And as a result, uh, these plants having these salt and mutations have elevated CO2 fix. When we developed this uh, technology, initially we used like, a model plant uh, called Arabidopsis thaliana. Uh, Theocrass, which is very useful for genetic screening and identifying uh, differences in DNA. We found in this model plant that we can um, release some of the breaks to produce aromatic compounds and in consequence, the, because it's a demanding carbon pathway, the plants start fixing more carbon. But the problem in our hand is on a global scale. And then to solve that, our next step is to transfer this technology from the model plant into crops, both food crops and um, biofuel crops. For food crops, we are looking first to uh, transfer this technology to soybean and uh, maize. And then for biofuel crops, we are first looking to transfer this to uh, sorghum. This transfer of technology will be done by introducing this uh, point mutations that increase the aromatic uh, compounds in the model plant introduced into the uh, crop, either by tran like transgenics or by in the future by CRISPR. If we see that that is a more valuable uh, approach to, to the crops, so far the preliminary results that we are having is very good.